Leather needles. They're thin, cylindrical metal tools, often with a sharp point and one eyelet, and they're used to securely draw thread through holes in leather and utilized in both hand stitching and machine sewing. They're available in a range of thicknesses, lengths with varying shapes, points, and eyelet sizes. Leather needles cost generally a few dollars for a few needles. They're used very often in leather crafting, and so let's look at the most popular ones, what they're used for, and how they may help you in your next project. The first one we're going to look at is what's called a glover's needle. Now these are tricky to see, so I'm gonna backstop them with this black, and then we'll be able to see it a little more closely. Glover's needles are named thusly due to glove makers' use of them. They're one of the few leather specific needles that have a sharp point for penetrating the leather. They have triangular points on one end and an eye for thread on the other. They are generally used for sewing hide and buckskin articles together and useful certainly for gloves, jackets, vests, moccasins, and similar accessories. So here we can see that triangular tip and then here we can see the eye. The next one we have is called a lacing needle. And lacing needles are used primarily for lace as opposed to threads. It's typically put through leather goods that already have a hole put into them where that lace is going to go through. So there's no need for a sharp point because that hole already exists. So the primary function is to help feed lace through the existing holes to help stitch that leather. They're often used for decorative work on belt edges, purses, holsters, and any number of items which may appear more rugged in nature. And there are a few different types. One is going to have a little spring clasp here where you can feed the lace through and it'll spring hold it shut. Another variety has these two prongs here. And that is going to catch onto that leather material and then help pull it through as the stitches are being made. Next, we have the Saddler's Harness Needle. These needles are cylindrical in shape with a blunt point on one end and an eye for thread on the other. These are a very popular type of needle used in a lot of types of leather working and sizes are gonna vary and selected based on which size of the eye and which size of the thickness of the needle are gonna be most needed for that particular application that you are using it for. As an example, here's a larger needle with a larger eye. The curved needle are similar to harness needles, except that they are not straight. Sometimes they are semi-circled, sometimes they are S-shaped, and the sizes are going to vary to accommodate different thread thicknesses. Their primary use is sewing leather pieces that are on different planes and also through heavy, thick materials. We also have the common straight needle. And this is the standard needle that we see most often for hand sewing applications. They are available in a wide variety of sizes and end styles depending upon what it is you're trying to work with, how heavy the material is, and how much force is going to be required for that needle. Here is a weaving needle. So weaving needles are longer needles that have a curved and flared end making it easy to push through lacing and other flat layers that you may try to be putting leather or threads through. So here's that very unique end, and it's got a pretty wide eyelet as well. And then we have our sewing machine needles. So most of what we talked about this far has been hand needles that we're gonna be using for hand and manual sewing. There are obviously some incredible machines out there. So machine needles have a special shank, and it's right there that allows it to seat into the sewing machine. There are two main shank styles, flat and round. Depending on the model of machine and what you're using, that will typically determine the type of shank that you will choose. So you can see a flat end over there, and then as you turn, kind of rounds out on the top. So this is more of the flat variety. And then on the end, you can see where there's an eyelet towards the bottom where the thread would go through. 
And all machine needles have a sharp point to penetrate the leather. Pre-made holes are not going to be necessary, as is more common with hand sewing, as the needle penetrates through as it sews. The style of point will be determined by the type of material that you are sewing, as well as any kind of finished appearance of the stitching that you are looking for. So those are the main types of leatherworking needles. Certainly you can get a lot of varieties and different sizes and types, and you may have 12 or 15 or 20 different needles depending on how much and how often you're sewing. That said, these are the basic ones to give you an idea of what's available and what type you may be looking more closely into depending on the work that you're doing. So let's look at care and maintenance. So if we look, most of these needles are shiny. And that's because they are plated to help prevent rusting, which is especially important when you're sliding this through your material. You know, the last thing you want is for any kind of rust or, you know, abrading elements on it to pull and tug on your material or discolor it or anything else. So generally the needles are plated to keep them clean and smoothly operating. So when you're going to use them, inspect them first to see if there's any rust or discoloration and just make sure that they are clean and looking good. Additionally, check your eyelets and make sure that they are in good working order. Nothing is bent or broken. And if possible, depending on what you're stitching, uh, maybe you're working through an oiled piece of leather or something that may transfer, you know, any kind of compositions onto your needle, you may want to wipe them down with a dry lint-free cloth, and that way they're clean and ready for the next time you'll need them. And one more element to keep in mind is needle storage. They're really small, easy to lose, and if you go by the old saying, like finding a needle in a haystack, yes, they can be very difficult to find. So needle storage can be a very simple and high impact <laughs> choice for your studio or workspace or anything like that. So what can be really great is something like this. This is a wooden needle case, and it's essentially just a small hinged box. And it has this cork on top, so if you wanted to stick needles into it, they'd be able to rest on the top there. Uh, for example, if you are sewing and need to change some out, or you want to keep sizes you know, easy um, to reach, you can do that, and I'll show you an example. You could just take the needle and it'll stick right in the top like that. And you can keep a few up there if you'd like. I generally keep them inside and that way I pretty much can keep track of them more easily. Um, additionally, the inside of this needle case has magnets that line the bottom and there's also magnets that close it. So it makes it great because here we can open and close it and they're not going to move. Also, if we put one down, it's going to immediately get drawn towards that magnet and kind of stay relatively in place, which is great because when you start to accumulate a lot of needles, it's going to be easier if they are where you put them rather than if you were to close this and they all kind of jumble about each time you open it, it's going to have to be like a little bit of a search. But if you've got a magnetic one, it keeps it really easy, um, one, to keep them in place and two to find them because they're generally going to be where you last put them. And then the magnetic closure is great because it's not going to open on its own. It's pretty sturdy. And then you have all of your needles in one place in a relatively cool, dry environment. Choosing the right needle can make sewing leather easy and enjoyable. With all the various options available, it's a really fun category of tools to learn about, get experience with, and of course, like any other tool, add it to the shop. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have preferences for needles or a brand or even different storage methods, please share them with us. And there you have it. Until next time.